Please, Mikael, you have 200 seconds. <laughs> Thank you so much, Margareta. Um, so, I'm Michael from Learning to Sleep. We are addressing one of the biggest health problems in the world, and that is bad sleep. And as you all know, bad sleep can cause you uh, further problems like diabetes, cancer, obesity, cardiovascular diseases, and, and so on. Um, we have the solution for that. We have um, uh, the world's best uh, sleep improvement program. Through a digital platform using uh, C CBT and the psychology, uh, everything evidence-based, we have treated about 1,000 patients in Sweden so far, and the good thing is that 94% of our patients get improved sleep. Um, that sounds great. Uh, one of the challenges that we have had is to actually get the sleep data into our program from our, from our uh, patients. And uh, since I promised Margareta that she could say the word, word premiere, because that was on her bucket list, uh, uh, I promised her to show our live demo of our uh, new voice-assisted sleep diary, but I couldn't uh, due to the noise level here. So I'll give you the second, second best thing, and I hope this works at least. This is Richard, our CTO, uh, showing our demo in the office. No, and I don't get any sound from this. That was uh, unfortunate. All right. This version of learning to sleep. Ah, no. Greetings. Okay. How can I assist? Can we fill in my sleep diary, please? Sure, no problem. When did you go to bed? Nine o'clock. And when did you fall asleep? Twenty past nine. Okay, when did you wake up? Around five o'clock. And at what time did you actually get out of bed? Quarter past six. How would you grade your sleep from one to five? Two. I've added this information to your diary. Have a great day. Okay, so this may seem like just only a cool gadget, but actually it's a way for us to get more accurate data into the, into the, the, the system. And when you have more accurate data, the voice assistant can actually also give you sleep advice back. So uh, we are at the moment, moment training the system in order to give you, give you uh, further experience of how to improve, improve your sleep, combined, of course, with our um, world-leading sleep improvement treatment program. So, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mikael. Uh, I think that worked pretty well as okay. an alternative. Yeah. Please, <laughs> panel. All right, so um, each morning when I wake up, my Samsung phone asked me if I've been sleeping between 11 and 6 o'clock because it measures when I lay the phone down. Uh, yep. So it automatically gathers a little bit of sleeping information. Yep. How do you actually gather the information? Is that only by user input or do you have any devices that are able to assist in gathering the information? Yeah, I love that question because everybody asks us. No, we don't use devices in order to measure sleep because uh, most research show that uh, people who use uh, fitness bands to track sleep or get more stressed than helped. So uh, we avoid that. And there is also other research uh, that research that shows that that self-assessment is as good as what, what you can measure from a normal fitness band. In order to measure sleep accurately, you need to put people into a sleep lab. Uh, but that's but then you're not in your home, so it's another. So we don't use that, and, and we know that because since since we have 94% success rate in our program, we don't use, need any better data than the one that we get from self-assessment. One more? Just curious, how how do you measure that I have improved my sleep? What is the uh, yeah. the number, so to say? Yeah. We, we use an international index called ISI, Insomnia and Severity Index, which is used by physicians all over the world in order to measure sleep quality. Uh, it's a scale between 0 and 28. If, you are tr if you have 28, you're hospitalized due to bad sleep, and if you have 
Siri, you're, you're probably a small baby. So you seem to, you, you look well, Thomas. So I think that you, you have maybe six or seven, that's fine. If you have 10, 10 or more, you should actually see, see yeah. So what we do is we measure patients before and after. And if you have an improvement of three points on the scale or more, it's regarded as you have a sleep improvement. But our average is actually 10.7. Thank you very much, Mikael, and from Learning to Sleep. Thanks. Also a member from Health Tech Nordic, demonstrating in the booth just outside.